Now we are going to start with wave parameters that is the certain quantity to quantities which can actually describe the wave completely. So this is a wave, I have shown you a transfer wave. As you know that this is a crest and this is a trough. We can actually have many information related to the wave. So the one is oscillation. One is oscillation. What is oscillation? See, suppose I have a particle and if I say that it vibrate up and down. So, uh, whenever particle vibrate up and down, it completes one oscillation. But if I say there is a particle which vibrate only in upward direction, so this is not an oscillation. Oscillation is that a complete movement of particle about its mean position. This is the mean position, the rest one. So, the complete movement of particle about its mean position is the oscillation. So, I will write a complete movement of particle about its mean position. Right. So, if I say that particle is like that and I draw a wave like this and I, I ask you that whether it is oscillation. So, no it is not an oscillation because here it is showing a crust, here it is showing a trough and uh, each wave consists of one crust and one trough. So, that means complete wave comprised of one crest and one trough. So, this is not a, uh, this is not a complete oscillation or it is not an oscillation but this is a oscillation. So, oscillation is complete movement of particle about its mean position. Second thing we have is amplitude. Second thing we have is amplitude. What is amplitude? Suppose I have a particle here and amplitude is uh, this, this, this peak actually shows that this much it can move up and this is the maximum height it can reach down. So, amplitude is the maximum displacement of particle from its mean position either in upward direction or in downward direction. Suppose if I say that here is my particle and it moves up to this much height or it can move up to this much height in downward direction. So, both of this like both in both the cases it, it is called as amplitude. So, amplitude is the movement of particle. or you can say maximum displacement of particle. Be why we use the term displacement? Because displacement is a distance in a specific direction. So, this is the distance traveled in a specific direction therefore, I am writing displacement. So, maximum displacement of particle, um, uh, maximum displacement of particle from its mean position, from its mean position in either direction whether upward or downward. So, it, you do not have to take both of them to calculate amplitude, we just need the one distance whether up or whether down. So, this is what is a amplitude. Third parameter we have is, third parameter we have is wavelength. Third we have is wavelength. Now, what is wavelength? Suppose this is one wave I will draw here. So, this is amplitude. Suppose I, I draw like this, suppose this is one wave right and this is an another wave. So, this is crust, this is crust, this is trough, this is trough, I write, I write here and these are trough. So, the wavelength is actually a distance between two consecutive crust or trough. So, that means and you have to see crust which kind of crust only the consecutive ones. Suppose if I have one more wave here. So, wavelength is not this, but wavelength can be this. So, wavelength is the distance between two consecutive crusts or likewise two consecutive trough. So, what is wavelength? It is the distance between two consecutive crust, consecutive means one after the another, two consecutive crust or troughs. This is what is a wavelength. Third parameter we have is, fourth one is frequency. Now, what is frequency? <clears throat> Suppose 
if I say that these kind of these number of waves is produced in one second, I fix the time to one second and I see that how many waves are produced in that given second. So suppose I found a graph like this. So that means it comprises of how many wave? One wave, another wave, another wave because one wave consists of one crust, one trough. So till here we have one wave, till here second wave, till here third wave. So the number of waves produced in one second is three. So that is the frequency. So what is frequency? It is number of waves produced per second. It is number of waves produced per second. So this is called as frequency. Another parameter we have is time period. Now as the name suggests, you know that what is the time period? It is actually a time taken by a particle to complete one oscillation. As I told you that one oscillation is this and this that means movement that is the movement in upward as well as movement in downward and then again returning to its mean position. This is the one oscillation. So a time period is the time taken to a particle to complete one oscillation. That means a movement from mean position to up, then mean, then down, then mean. So this is one oscillation. So what is time period? It is the time taken by particle to complete one oscillation. Time taken by a particle to complete one oscillation is the time period. Next we have is uh, the velocity. As you know that velocity is actually a speed in a given direction. This we have already done in that chapter motion. So here also what does velocity describes? Velocity describes the speed of wave in given direction. It is the speed of wave in given direction or we can say distance travelled per unit time by a wave. Right. So uh, this is the velocity that is the speed of the wave in a given direction. So now uh, it is time to know that how we actually donate these parameters. So how we donate amplitude? We donate ampli uh, note amplitude by A and we can measure in nanometer. What is nanometer? 1 nanometer is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 9 meter and even we can do in Armstrong. 1 Armstrong is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 10 meter because they are too small so that is why we take the smaller units. Wavelength is denoted by a symbol like this and this symbol is called as lambda. This symbol is called as lambda. Again we can uh, calculate in because it is actually again a distance. So we can calculate in nanometer as well as in Armstrong. Frequency we denote it by, by a symbol called like this and this symbol is called as nu. This symbol is called as nu. So this is how we denote the frequency and the unit which is used for frequency is hertz which is equal to per second because that is number of waves produced per second. So it, uh, hertz can be uh, written as per second also. Time period is denoted by t and how we calculate? Obviously we calculate in second. Velocity we denote by v and the unit which we use is meter per second and also we can use centimeter per second so either of but maximum time we use meter per second there is a relation between time period and frequency there is a relation between time period and frequency what's that time period is 1 by frequency or we can say frequency is equal to 1 by time period so we can write either of and also there is a relation between velocity wavelength and frequency there is a relation between them also that is velocity, wavelength and frequency and what is that? It is nu is equal to V upon lambda. It is nu is equal to that is frequency is equal to I will write here frequency is equal to velocity upon wavelength. So this is how uh, we uh, relate these terms. So time period and frequencies are related and uh, there is a relation between the wavelength frequency and the velocity. So these are the wave parameters and you should be aware of these parameters because whenever you are talking of wave, so anybody can ask you uh, related to the wave in these 
in the in the, you can say in this language so you should know that what is time period what is frequency what is amplitude so you should aware of this so now we are going to start with another topic so as you all are now familiar that what is sound sound is a mechanical wave and out of that is a longitudinal because it is a wave so it uh, signifies all these parameters as well right